Matthew 21, we're getting at verse 1. Here it begins the reading of God's holy word. And when they drew nigh into Jerusalem, they will come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you'll find an ass tied in a coat with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, your king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, in a coat, the foil of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put them, put them on their clothes, and set them thereon, and a very great multitude spread their garments, in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strolled them in the way and the multitudes that it went before and that followed crying saying Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the, he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And he was coming to Jerusalem. All the city was moved saying who is this? And the multitude said this is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. So far, the scripture. So far, the scripture. Verse 4 says, all this was done. Say all this. All this. Was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, sitting upon an ass, and a coat before you of an ass. I want to talk to you today from this subject, the assignment, the purpose, and the burden. The assignment, the purpose, and the burden. You may be seated in the presence of God. Today is Palm Sunday. Palm, my palms. And everywhere around 11, 12 o'clock, everybody in the churches are waving their palms. They're excited because Jesus has entered into Jerusalem. Jesus has entered into Jerusalem. He's He's finally here. He's finally made his entry. Three years he's preaching, doing all kinds of miracles and healing folks and telling, telling disciples, be quiet, don't tell nobody. Can you imagine having a, a leader like that doing miracles and saying, don't tell nobody? These days, folks preach one uh, sermon, tell everybody. They posting it, 15 sharing, 15 times. Yeah. Tell everybody. But he keeps it on a down low, on a QT, quiet tip. For all you millennials, where's the QT? Where's the he keeps it undercover, keeps it in the closet. Michael said, just keep it in the closet. None of y'all got that. <laughs> Keep it in the closet. He, he keeps it in the closet until he enters into Jerusalem. It is actually Jerusalem. Uh, That's how you really pronounce it. Jerusalem. It is Jerusalem. And it is all about purpose. An assignment. That's what today is about. It's about purpose and it's about assignment. And your, your assignments are connected to your purpose. You can have many assignments, but they should all link up to one purpose. Problem is, some of us got. 20 purposes and only one assignment. 
You're supposed to have one purpose. And all of my assignments lead me to fulfill that one purpose. Like somebody, what's your purpose? I, if you don't know your purpose, act like you know it. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. But your assignments push you to your purpose. And, and you can kind of tell what your purpose is by the assignment that God gives you. You can kind of tell what your, what your, uh, your, your purpose is by the assignments. For instance, my, my wife, she has a purpose and for, for young people. She loves young people. And, and it became evident because every job she got, every job, dealt with young people. And you began to see it. This got to be my purpose because everywhere she, she worked in a daycare. She worked as a teacher. She worked for social services. She worked for after school program. I mean, she was, she, she was over the youth at New Life Pentecostal, New Life Cathedral. She was over foster care program. Everything dealt with young people. Not that she went looking for it and found her. So when God is leading, you got to look and say, look at my resume of assignments and I can figure out what my purpose is. And I can begin to operate more effectively when I know what my purpose is. Because if God keeps giving you these assignments and you keep fighting them, guess what? You have the same assignment all over again. Until you embrace your purpose, your assignment will frustrate you. And now you're mad because God, you keep telling God, I got to break out this door. And when you break out the door, God got another door. And when you open it, it's the same thing you just left. Yeah. Because that is your purpose. And I'm going to keep giving you the same assignment until you embrace your purpose. You got to go through each assignment. You got to pass the assignments. In school, our purpose was to pass the regents. Right. But every day we had to tackle an assignment That's good. so I got an assignment I got a math science, I got, I got an English assignment I got all these assignments what are all these assignments for? it's preparing you to pass a state exam so that was my purpose to get to the next grade but if I don't pass these assignments I don't go nowhere and a lot of us are frustrated <coughs> and we're running from assignments and we're asking God, I don't know my purpose, I don't know my purpose, I don't know. What are you running from? Because <laughs> usually what you're running from is connected to your purpose. But you keep, we, we, we're running and we want somebody else's purpose. Because wow. I like what they do, but you can't do that. Right. You know, you're, 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 your hobby is not your purpose. You're, the thing you like to do is not your Purpose, your, 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 that, 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 that thing that just makes you happy. Because your purpose is not always going to make you happy. I should be happy in my purpose. I ain't heard Jesus say that on the cross. That was his purpose. But no way the text where it says, and he smileth. You see that? that? And he smileth. Pow! And he smileth. He was in the garden the night before and said, guess what, God? I don't want to do this. Yes, that's what he said. He said, check this out. He says, uh, he says you know, I know we, I've been rolling for three and a half years with, with, these, with these boys, and, I, and I've been doing this stuff. He says, but if there's any way we can renegotiate the contract. Right. He says, because I don't want to, even God in the flesh says, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And you acting like, I, 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 I don't know what's wrong with me. I just, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. No, you got to be honest with yourself. Say, say, you know, I don't want to do this. That's what it is. And you be honest with yourself, you will be better. Yes. Acting like you God Jr. I can do all things through Christ. So even God said, I don't want to do this. God Jr. But then he said, nevertheless, Whatever you say. 
And if you get to that point where you say, God, I don't want to do this. But if you say I got to do it, I'm going to do it. Because if tonight is connected, and if tonight is not even my purpose, and the assignment you gave me tonight was just to pray, and the people I put with me are sleeping. I brought these boys just to watch me. I didn't say pray, I said watch. Okay, Jesus, we, we right here. You, you good, you go pray. We, 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 we got you. Ain't nobody rolling up on Jesus. We got him, right? Ten minutes like, <laughs> they dreaming, they, they all comfy, they, they twisting and turning, they cutting. I said, you guys can't even watch me. And he's struggling between his flesh and his spirit. Because cause, cause the God man says, I don't want to do this. But the God, God says, you got to do it. Yeah. And you will struggle between, between where you are and where you're going. Because, because if you, if you want to be comfortable, you'll never be successful. You just want to be comfortable. You just want to go, go and get you a nice comfort. I got me a thousand thread count sheet. I got a thousand feathers in this bad boy. You, you want to be comfortable, but successful people are comfortable later. Later. I work my 20s and work my 30s and work my 40s. So when I get 50 and 60 and 70, I can just lay up. I want to lay up. I don't want to have to preach when I'm 70. I want to preach because I want to preach. Waking well, up, back hurt, chest hurt, head hurt. And I got to go to the church because I, I got to. Ain't gotta get my offering again. No, 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 no. no. I want to be so successful that I'm gonna call and I say, you know what? I'm coming today to preach. You know, I don't feel like preaching. I said everything. I worked my tail off for 20 good years. Now I'm gonna chill. That's right. Because what you give should give back to you. Which what you give to after a while has to give back to you. But if you don't give much to it, it ain't gonna give much to you. So, so it is about purpose, y'all. And it is about assignment. And if you are going to be successful, you have to understand and know the difference between both of them. What is my purpose? What is my assignment? And, 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 and you, you, you mix up the two. You start thinking your assignment is your purpose. That's a problem. When you begin to think your assignment is your purpose and your purpose is your assignment, then you stop in the embryonic stage of development. Because what you thought was your purpose was just getting you to your purpose. So instead of being a a a a fetus you are an embryo instead of being delivered at six seven pounds you were delivered at one pound because you were you you were six months into the game it's like i gotta come out of here <coughs> now you're premature and now we got to hook you up to all this stuff. We got to give you round the clock care. We got to put you in a bubble because you could not stay in an environment that was supposed to nurture you. I think my assignment is my purpose. So I bust out before I'm ready. And now I got all of these issues. So this Palm Sunday. It's not it was, it's not the purpose. It's an assignment. Yeah, that's right. Today was part of the assignment. It. Yeah. it wasn't even a last assignment, but it was an assignment. It was a, 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 a great assignment. He had to go into Jerusalem. His first time in Jerusalem. 
Salam. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has to step into their Jerusalem. And, uh, uh, Jerusalem represents a place where people will smile on your face and talk about you behind your back. Yeah. It's that place where they're clapping, but after a while, they're spitting on you. Yeah. It's that place where they're saying, Doc, you should start a church. I'm going to go with you. You did one good platform. Now you got five robes and a briefcase. Right. Right. You, you know, I said I was going to leave, but I feel led of the Lord to, to stay where I'm at. Purpose. The purpose was Friday. The purpose was Friday. The assignment is today. But the purpose is five days later. And you got to recognize your assignment. Everybody in the scriptures have a purpose. And, 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 and they're, they're an assignment. Moses was assigned to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Joshua was assigned to go to Canaan. David was assigned Goliath. Solomon was assigned the temple. Jonah was assigned to Nineveh. John the Baptist was assigned to the wilderness. Paul was assigned to Rome. And Jesus was assigned for Jerusalem. It is an assignment. It is not your purpose. Yeah. Jerusalem. What's the big deal about Jerusalem? The first time we hear about Jerusalem, we hear about it with Abraham. We're talking thousands of years early. God is amazing. God, God, God does something that, that people in Hollywood have taken advantage of. He writes the story backwards. He never writes a story from the beginning. A good writer never writes from the beginning. He writes backwards. This is where I want to end. And you begin to start writing and writing and writing and writing. You write backwards. You saw, you, 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 you write backwards and, and you, you, you watch a movie and, 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 and you see a movie and, and you, see the, you see the husband or the father tell a daughter how to kick. It's only five minutes into the movie. He's showing the daughter how to kick. Uh -huh. Two hours later, the girl is captured. Right. She, when she does what? She kicks. Yes. That was written backwards. Right. And God writes your story backwards. And, and he tells you what he sees. And, and, and this, is a, this is a frustrating about God because he shows you the picture at the end. Yeah. At the end. At the end. And my, my, my wife and I, we got this problem in the house. We'll, 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 we'll settle on a Netflix picture. Let's watch this. And, and I'm antsy. I'm not a, you know, I, I got to move around. Yeah, it's a, six o'clock, I'm up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I, I, I got to move. I can't be in the back. I got to walk around, do something. Find something to paint, find something to hit. I got to break something, put it back together. <laughs> and we'll watch a, a good series. And we'll... Good series. We got three seasons. 18 shows a season. Yeah. And I'll say, you know what? This season, this episode three, I'm kind of done right now. You know, hold off right now. And I'll come in. She wants season three. I'm like, you're supposed to wait for me. <laughs> now I'm seeing stuff I don't want to see yet. So I got to hold my eyes and call my cousin. Because I got to go way back. Because I don't want to see the end. And God does what she does. He, he pushes you and lets you see the end. And now you got you to gotta work all that stuff out. You got to watch it come to pass. You got to watch it. You got to go through the process and, and go through the hell. Uh, and, and, and he'll show you stuff. God shows you. He shows you houses and lands. Uh, but he don't show you tears and rejections. He told them, he said, I got something for you to, for you to take over. I got land for you. It says, and then this is the cue. He tells him, he says, I got, a, I got a land for you. He says, he says, be of good courage. <laughs> what do you mean be of good courage? He says, he says, be of good courage. He says, because uh, uh, you, you, uh, don't be dismayed by what you see. Uh, what are you talking about? You say, I got land. If God says, I got land, I expect you, God, give me the land, give me the address, give me the coordinates, I'm going to go there. But for you to say, I got land, don't be discouraged. 
means that there may be a point where discouragement is going to come even though I got a word. I don't have the land. I got a word. And the word is just as good as having the land. And between the word and the land, there's a devil. Between the promise and and you you inhabiting it and, or ma and manifesting now there is a demon a, a sign to stop you yes. and he knows it's yours yes. the problem is you don't know it's yours you're still trying to figure out is it mine remember jesus came he came on the scene he came on the scene, he bust out, he start doing stuff, uh, and, and John, John uh, uh, washed his feet, baptized him, uh, and all that, uh, and they was all happy, uh, and heaven began to speak, uh, and then, then John got captured and was thrown in prison. And John sent his disciples and said, ask him, is he really the one? Or should we look for another? Because when discouragement comes, you begin to doubt what God said. So they are, they are finally in, they are in Jerusalem. But you got to back up to where this thing started. It started, it started with Abraham. It, it started Abraham. Abraham is 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 fighting. He's fighting. God promises Abraham's grandson, uh, uh, Jacob. I'm going to give you land. He tells Abraham, I'm going to give you land. I'm going to give you some stuff. And, and Abraham finds himself in a fight with five different kings. And he defeats them all. And Abraham goes into, into Salem. It's, it's Jerusalem. He goes into Jerusalem. And the king of Salem or Jerusalem gives Abraham when he defeats the enemy he gives Abraham wine and bread he gives him wine and bread bread represents life sustenance the word it represents uh, that, that, that you made it out so I'm going to feed you so you can continue and wine represents transformation I'll give you a transformed life Melchizedek gives him food. Abraham turns around and pays tithe to Melchizedek. Because you are supposed to feed what's feeding you. He feeds what has just fed him. He, he gives him wine and bread. And, and, and Abraham says, I got to give you a tenth of what God gave me. And because he gave him a tenth, he gave the king of Salem a tenth, God gave him his land. When you feed God's house, God feeds your house. He gave him 10% to take care of Salem. God turns around and gives him Jerusalem. Yeah, it. He, 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 he gives him a dime. For Salem, God says, because you honored Salem, I'm going to give you Jerusalem. Because you honored my land, you can have all of the land. I'm, I'm going to give it all to you. Because you gave him a dime, I'm going to give you all of the land. I, I, I don't understand how folks sit down and won't give the card. And God gives you all of it back. He... He gave Melchizedek, king of Salem. It was, it was Jerusalem. It was Salem. And Abraham pays a tithe. And later on, God gives him all of it. You can never give God, and God don't give you well, way more than you gave him. How do you hold on to a measly little dollars, and God got millions and billions, and ideas, and all kind of creativity. If you would give to Melchizedek, God would give you all of it. Press down, shaking together and running over. You know what they remind me of? Uh, 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 some of y'all, some of y'all understand. Man, I know the women do, uh, but laundry. You ever, you ever put off laundry? 
come. He ain't that much, but I'm gonna wait till next weekend to do this. Next week you come up, some come up, and you look at your jaw, you got, you got a few things left, and you know, I'm gonna stretch these bad boys this week. And you, you wash your stuff out in the sink, uh, you pitting it on a radiator, you, you, you old school, uh, uh, any old school folks in here, you put a hanger in front of the stove. We ain't had no dryer, we had an oven. Put your jeans on that radiator. But you had to put them inside out so you don't get that mark on them, you know what I'm talking about. You got that, get that radiator mark on it, yeah, I know. Put your jingles and now ladies on that pilot light. And you got all these clothes now. You got to press down. Shaking together. And it's running over. And you got to press down. Shaking together. And it's running over. And you got to press down. Heck with somebody else. My hair's mine. And you got to press down. Shaking together. But it's still running over. That's what God says I'll do to you. I'll give you so much because you waited another week. I'll press it down, shake it together, and it's going to run over. Jerusalem. He says, I'm going to give you Jerusalem. He, he, Moses picks it up. God gives us a land. God, God promises us Canaan. Jerusalem is in Canaan. It was part of Canaan. Canaan, huge, huge. Jerusalem is this fortified city in Canaan. Joshua goes in, takes down Jericho. Bad. Had some problems with AI, but they got over that. They, 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 they come in. Joshua tells the sun to stop. Tells the moon to be quiet. I need more time. He that like God. You tell God, I need more time. I know what the paperwork said, but I need more time. I guarantee you, I'm telling you, you can tell the sun to slow down. I need more time. I need more time. I need more time. They defeat him and they, they take over Jericho. They are taking over Canaan, but they never took Jerusalem. They take over Canaan, y'all. You gotta see it. They surround Canaan. They take over. It's like taking over the state of New York, but you can't take Brooklyn. You can't take Brooklyn. I was driving down Jackie Robinson into Burrow, whatever they call it, and came by the sign that said, Brooklyn's in the house. <laughs> Funky Fresh. They said, they take over New York. But they can't take Brooklyn. They took over Canaan, but they could not take Shavu Salem. It, it belonged to the Jebusites. It belonged to the Jebusites. And the Jebusites, Jebusites said, uh, y'all not taking this. They told David, they said, they said, they said, uh, 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 you can't have this. They said, absolutely not. They said, uh, if you try it, we will kill you. you can't take over Jerusalem. And David was a man. He was after God's heart. And he loved God. And wanted a capital for God. He wanted the presence yes. in Jerusalem. He called it. David was so arrogant. He was so powerful. He called it the city of David. Uh-huh. You know you bad. This place will not never be called Brooklyn again. It's called the city of Jermaine. Who the boy was. He renamed the whole region. The city of Harry, the city of Amelsa, the city of Sonia, the city of Lloyd. This, I'm changing the name because of who I am. You, you a bad, tell about you a bad boy when you change the name. You a bad, you, you, you bad, you so bad. I don't need nobody to sign no paperwork. I don't need no city papers. I don't need city hall to sanction this. I'm changing the name from the Jebusite city, from Jerusalem to the city of David, Mount Zion. Yeah. Changes the name. And they, and they march, they march with the, with the presence into Jerusalem. 
And the Bible says uh, they got it wrong the first time uh, because they, uh, they pushed the presence. And you never push God's presence. We come here to push a praise. Uh, come on, people. Uh, we come here to push a praise. Uh, why are we pushing you when God blessed you to be here? Here we go. Here we go, pushing the praise. Uh, we gotta push the praise. Uh, come on, young people. Uh, come on, mothers. Uh, come on, people. Uh, hasn't God been good? Uh, hasn't God made a way, way, way? <laughs> no, nobody. Listen, I know y'all saved, uh, but but I know some of y'all used to go to them clubs, uh, and nobody had to push you to go to the club. They say, child, is going down at the rooftop tonight. You say, what? I'm up in there. I got my stuff. I got my freaking dress. I'm going to hit him in the head with this new outfit. It's ladies' night. And the film is right. Oh, what a, oh, what a night. Yes, it's ladies' night. Oh, what a night. And ain't nobody pushed you to go to Bentley's. Nobody pushed you to go to the limelight. Nobody pushed you to go way out there. You just went. You didn't care. And if you was broke like some of us, you got drunk before you got there. He was drunk before you got there. Yeah. You had eight dollars. You bought one drink and held that thing all night like you just balling. Balling. Right. <laughs> and they pushed the presence. And, and the presence was about to fall. The presence was about to fall. And somebody touched it. And God kills him. Because I don't need you to protect my presence. God never called you to protect his presence. He picks himself up. I'll never fall. The word will never fall. Not one chat, not one tittle. The word shall never fall. When there's prophecies, they shall fail. When there's other stuff, they shall fail. But the word will never fall. So they get it right. And now they are carrying. They're on assignment, y'all. They're on assignment. Now they are carrying. They're carrying. They're carrying the presence to Jerusalem. They're carrying the presence to Jerusalem. They finally get to Jerusalem because it belonged to the Jebusites. It was Salem. The Jebusites lived there. And it was called the land of the Jebusites. So they intertwined the two and called them Jerusalem. So now it's Jerusalem, city of David. David says, I got to build the temple here. I got to build the presence of God here. And as much as he loved God, God said, absolutely not. You cannot build my house because your hands got blood on it. Your hands are dirty. Your hand, David, I love you, uh, but you spill too much blood. Uh, David, you my boy, uh, but you spill too much blood. Uh, David, I know you after my heart, uh, but you spill too much blood. Uh, and when they start laying bricks on this bad boy, uh, I need innocent hands to lay bricks. I need innocent hands to build it. Now, the guilty can come, but they can't build it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The horse can come, but they can't build it. The drug dealers can come, but they can't build it. I need people uh, that got clean hearts. I need people uh, that got clean hands. I need people uh, that understand respect and integrity and dignity. I need them to build my house. I need them to lay the chief cornerstone. I need them to make the plans. I need them to build my house. Everybody else can come. But everybody can't build. And I think we asked the folks who's supposed to be coming uh, to be building. And wonder why we stagnated uh, and why we have not grown yet. Uh, the wrong people got bricks in their hand. Who can come? You can 
can be a part, but you can't build. And when you're trying to build something, be careful who you let hold your bricks. Be careful who you let touch your stuff. Be careful who you let mix your mortar. Because there are a lot of quarter cutters out here. There's a lot of folks that don't want to wait for the stuff to be right. To Jerusalem. David, David has an idea, but God says, since you wanted to build me a house, he said, I'll build you a house, and I'll let your son build the house. Right. They built the temple in Jerusalem. They are finally in Jerusalem. They got it. They got it. It's going on. They, they got the temple in Jerusalem. They made it to that city. Now, this issue, this, this is, this is the first time his presence is in Jerusalem. First time.